Hello YouTube, this is Todd Martin here from Solid Shell Security and here's another video where we're going to be talking about that chat server that we're going to be working on. So as you can see I have the source code that we worked on in the last video which was the first video which is the client server and then over here on the right side of my screen I have the client side and in this video I'm going to be mostly breaking down the client side of the program but the first thing I want to highlight I didn't think about this at first but this is a wasted code the fact that we had variable i and had it equal to true we don't exactly need to do that we could just do while true that works too so that saves us a little bit of typing made that mistake because I was programming at 3 o'clock in the morning it's never a good idea so let's talk about the client pi as you can see I just have it named client.py we have imported socket again and we set our socket just like we did over here in the server we all, but the main difference between this program and the server client program is this line right here here we have we use the connect function but over here we use the bind function the bind function is used whenever you're mostly going to be taking in, in connections as you can see we have the uh, S dot accept function used over here. Over here, we do not use this function. It's just mainly the properties, the property difference between bind and connect. Bind would be used on a server that's going to be taking in connections. Connect would be used on a client who's going to connect to a server. Um, something else we can also change about this program is we can also set a host. and we can also set our port and instead of defining it like this where we just have the little uh, quotation marks that are empty and then defining the port we could also put host port that would work too but in order to get this program to work like it's supposed to looking at port real quick these numbers have to match up the port number that you're using on the client for it to connect to has to be the same port number on the server because the server is taking connections from port 8000 if the client is trying to connect to a different port besides 8000 it's not going to work like we want it to also once again this i equals true is worthless line of code while true and so as you can see whenever it hits this loop we have message equals raw input and then it's going to be the message that you want to send to the server because the server is already listening it's already waiting to receive data so we're going to send data and we are going to send it using s.send message which is variable right here it's going to send it over here and then this is going to say okay we received it now we're going to print out the data that we received now we're going to offer the user to give a reply so whoever's on the server client node sets reply sends it right here and the client over here receives it and then prints it's been received and print the data that was received or in this case variable apply and it's going to be receiving a thousand twenty four bits of data or it can you don't have to send that amount but that's like the maximum threshold so we'll add that right there 
1024 is max data that can be received. So try to think of anything else about this program you may want to know. Um, I think in the last video I talked about the difference between send and send all. Uh, just to kind of quickly highlight that again, just in case I wasn't too clear if I talked about it. So let's say we have one server and we have two clients connected to it and we want it to be like a chat room. Well, in order if the client's going to use this send command here and it's going to send it to the server. And then the server for it to, and this is actually what we're going to work on in the next video, for the server to be able to send it to all clients connected because if the message is just being sent to the server, it's not going to get to the second client. So if client one sends a message to the server, client two is not going to get the message, only the server is going to get the message. So this send all basically says, okay, well, let's send a message to all the machines connected. And that's going to mainly come into play because in the next video, what I hope to do is have it so that way we can have two or more clients running. Whenever this sends a message, the server is going to take the message and then it's going to disperse it to all the other clients. So there definitely is a difference between send all and just the send command. Also with the server, if you just use the send, you're probably going to get an error. So like let's say someone who's running the server wants to send a message out to all the clients. They're going to use the send all command so that way it will send it to every node that is connected. Let's come over here and save that. And also, I forgot uh, one thing that I want to talk about. The source code to the chat client, the first source code that we talked about is in the bottom of the video that I posted. It is in the, de in the description. But the problem is, is it screwed up a little bit with the formatting. So if you look at it, you're going to see this. Just know that all of these lines right here need to be indented or else it's not going to work like we want it to. And I'm also going to include the source of this in the description of the video. So let's run it. for the, To be able to run this and test it, we are going to need two terminals or command prompts depending on what operating system you're using. Alright, as you can see it said connected by, then we have the IP address, which this is actually the local host address, and then another number, which isn't necessarily important. So the client has to send a message first, so we're going to say hello, received hello, what's up, nothing much meow and and this is why we had the loop the loop is so that way it will continually go over this code so that way instead of just sending one message and being done we can send multiple messages yeah pretty neat little program um, something else I should probably also talk about let's say we want to set this up to run on a local area network we could do it this way without modifying much code on the server client. Local area network is like everybody that's on the same wireless, same Wi-Fi, or everybody that's plugged into the same router and modem. Uh, a way to do this, like if your friend come over and you guys want to play around with this, the host, you could still set it to local hosts by leaving this blank, but you're going to have to on the computer that's going to act as only the client 
you're going to have to I think in Windows is IP config here it's IF config you're going to have to find out the IP address of the server client which will be listed somewhere in the network settings so let's say that this server was being hosted on in the local area network 192.168.1.2 so you'd put for the host 192.168.1.2 and this probably isn't going to work because I have no clue what is that IP address on my network but basically it's trying to connect now and it should work that way. Um, also, let's say you want to use this with a friend, but you're not over at each other's house, then you have to port forts on your local network and then use each other's IP address. I'll probably get more into that once we get a little bit more into a little bit more complex things with this program. But the main thing to stress about this program, and it's really the only major difference between the two programs we have here, is this connect. So just kind of go over again. This is the uh, client side, and it connects to a host. So that's pretty much it for this video. In the next video, we're going to be doing a little bit more with this program. So, see you then. Or as Truvis likes to say at the end of his videos, meow.